Since iPad OS 17 has been released, I wanted to check back up on external monitor support for the iPad and really find out if it is a genuine replacement for a Mac and if it's even ready to be used in a desktop scenario. I've been living with it for about a week now and I've been testing things like app compatibility, scaling issues, looking out for bugs, testing gaming performance and performance in general, and there's been loads of takeaways, so let's get straight into it. Let's talk about this desk setup first. I'm using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch with the M2 chip, and that's sitting in this stand from Grovemade. That's connected with a super fast USB-C cable to the Apple Studio display. And on the side of the Studio display, I've got a dongle sticking out of it, which takes all sorts of memory cards and other things I need to put in. For a keyboard, I'm using my NuFi Halo 65, which I really like. And I'm also using a trackpad rather than a mouse for this setup as well. For all of this to work, you need to have an M-powered iPad, so any of the M1 or M2 series and you also need to have a keyboard attached and a mouse or a trackpad. Or you can just use the Apple Magic Keyboard and plug it directly into a monitor. That will work too. That's the setup I'm using. And of course, if you do like the wallpapers I'm featuring in this video, this is a brand new pack that we've been working on recently and we're really, really happy with how it came out. It's heavily inspired by watercolors and two colors blending together. So if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, let's talk about the good news stuff first because there is some really good stuff here and I don't want this video to be overly negative, so let's jump into that. First up, external camera support is here and it's fully fledged. You can now plug in a webcam or you can even plug in a mirrorless camera like this one and use it as your webcam or use it as any sort of capture device. This is great because the iPad's camera position is just horrendous and especially when you have it in a desk setup scenario, it can be even worse. So getting this is just fantastic. And it works really well in apps like FaceTime and in Google Meet and even better in Google Meet as well. You can select which camera you'd want to use and what microphone you want to use. This isn't in every app yet. So in Zoom, for example, which is one of the big ones, you can't actually use this yet, which is a shame. But the fact that it's slowly rolling out is only a good sign. Secondly, and this is another huge feature, is you can now move windows wherever you like on the external display, which is awesome. This is something which we were all kind of begging for the second it came out. And now that it's here, it feels fantastic. You can move windows around wherever you like on the screen. And it's a very similar experience to Mac or Windows, even though it does feel a little bit slower. It's also now way more stable than it was before. I'm not getting any strange app crashes and I'm not getting any kind of weird resets to the home screen which is just great. There are some very occasionally, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but overall, this is a much more stable platform. And talking of that, apps generally feel a lot better on here too. The last time I was using this, I was getting all sorts of strange integrations with apps not scaling properly, or apps hijacking screens and taking over the iPad and the external display, but it's just not happening anymore. I'm also not getting any more apps which just completely black out. Last time I was using this, I was getting that all the time and whenever I stepped away from the iPad and came back a bit later, so many apps would either close or just go black and leave the windows up and that's not happening anymore which is all good stuff. And of course, we're getting the more pro level iPad apps too. Logic Pro and Final Cut are finally here on the iPad. And even though they don't fill the entire screen yet, which is annoying, the fact that they're here just means that the iPad is a more viable desktop solution. And it's just fantastic to see those apps. So while that tails up kind of the new things, I still wanted to reiterate that the good things of this are still fantastic. An example of that would be that some apps on the iPad are kind of better than the browser experience. So Twitter and threads, for example, and things like Instagram, you can use the full app on a big screen, which is really nice rather than the browser experience. And some apps which do go full screen are really, really convincing. Lightroom is a really good example of that where I edit all of my photos. That feels like a true desktop app. And LumaFusion, which is a really decent video editor, feels completely convincing as an app. And you can let the hours drift by while you're using it and you completely forget you're using an iPad, which is absolutely the experience it should be delivering, and it does. Oh, and some games are now even fully supporting a keyboard and mouse input. I played a little bit of Minecraft on here and using the keyboard and mouse or trackpad input was really, really good. It felt like I was just playing it on a normal PC despite not being full screen. And not to mention having a second screen as an iPad is a legitimately cool experience. You still get access to all of your iPad apps on that screen because it remains active and then you get to interact with it in exactly the same way as you would as if you were just using an iPad, which is just great. So if you need to take notes or if you need to do anything on a touch basis, you can just glance down and do that like normal, which is so, so cool. 
And not to mention, I really like the instant experience of the entire thing. This is a one cable solution. So you plug in the iPad and you immediately have this desktop scenario. And then when you plug it out, you have a normal iPad again. And finally, on the good things is performance is still fantastic. I'm obviously using the M2 version here, which is like beefed up with RAM and has the best processor. But even on the M1 version I've tried of this, the performance and experience holds up. I never feel like I'm waiting for anything and everything is nice and snappy all at once. That translates to gaming too. I tried out a huge amount of Honkai style rail and even on the higher graphic settings, it ran really well. It was the same for Minecraft and a bunch of Genshin Impact as well. So the iPad really does handle this well, even when it's powering its own screen at the same time. While I've been using this, I kept note of a bunch of small tips which have sped up my use. The first of those, if you hold down shift while you click an app, it will open up in your current space and not jump you to a new one. Also, rather than going to the dock to find apps or going to different spaces to find all your apps, if you press command and spacebar and open up spotlight and type it in, that's a much quicker way of getting to your apps and it saves you hunting around to find them, which has been really useful. Also, if you jump to settings and head over to stage manager, I always turn off the sidebar because it uses up such a huge amount of screen and getting to your separate spaces, especially with a trackpad is really easy with a gesture. So I always do that. Also, while you're in settings, it's worth jumping to the display setting and making sure you click show more. This will just give you more room to breathe on the big screen and the standard scaling kind of looks really big, so it kind of looks like a child's toy. And also probably my biggest recommendation for this whole setup is to use a trackpad rather than a mouse. Honestly, the mouse on iPadOS just feels so strange and sticky how it moves around the OS. But if you use a trackpad, it's crazy similar to using the iPad anyway. And everything from gestures to how it interacts with the OS just feels right. And finally, the best placement for the iPad is absolutely under the display. I've tried having this on the left or on the right and it just doesn't feel right. And there's even an option to have it on top of your external display and I really don't know who that's for, but Apple clearly intended this to be under the display and that is absolutely where it works best. Okay, with all the good stuff done, let's talk about the bigger issues here because there's still plenty to tackle. And the first up, it still does have bugs. And the biggest one that I came across was outright not being able to open apps from the dock. This was really strange, it didn't happen too often, but usually I just drag an app up from the dock to open it and it outright doesn't work. And when I click the app, it doesn't matter what I do, it just won't load up, which is really strange. There are still scaling issues as well with some apps. And I think this could be on developers over Apple, but I'm not overly sure. But some apps outright don't scale well and when you try and move them around it's just a complete mess and that brings me to kind of like the ui and interactions across the system as well it's still just not quite there some menu items need to be touched with a finger which can't be done with a trackpad or a mouse which is just so strange google docs is really bad for that another weird example is when i was trying to open davinci resolve it just wouldn't load on the external display at all every time i clicked it to open it it just outright wouldn't but then if i opened it on the ipad itself it would open and then i would have to physically move it from the ipad to the external display and then it would work, which was just really strange. And the top right menu bar just on the normal OS, if you click that on the external display, it opens up on the iPad, which is just weird. You'd expect it to open on the external display and it doesn't. Another downside as well with this is that full screen apps are just few and far between. And the weirdest thing about this is even Apple's brand new pro apps like Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro don't go into a full screen mode and they're from Apple themselves. That's just so weird. And unfortunately, the same goes for gaming. Not one game I tried went full screen on the external display. And I think that's a horrible shame. If anything should go full screen at this point, it should be gaming to take advantage of that full 16 by nine aspect ratio, which we're all used to. And one of the final things which always really annoyed me was the fact there's no direct sound control at all. So you can't pick where the sound's gonna come out of, whether it's gonna come out the iPad speakers or your external monitor speakers or your AirPod speakers or anything else like that. It just decides for you, which is very frustrating. While those are the bigger issues, this is plagued with annoying little issues as well, which I kept note of. And the first one up there, which I think is a bit of a miss, is you can't turn off the iPad screen and use this in a clamshell mode. 
If you turn off the iPad, you turn off the external display and that's kind of annoying. If you're working in the browser and open up an app like Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, it will constantly try and push you back to the actual app, even if you don't want it and you can't dismiss the notification, which is really frustrating. The actual dock on the iPad disappears if you drag an app just below it, which is just so frustrating. I do that all the time and I have to reload the apps into the right place for the dock to reappear. That's annoying. App volumes don't work unless you're muting it. So if you're in YouTube and you want to use the volume on a YouTube video, you can't, it just doesn't work unless you absolutely mute it. If you're on a video call and you want to share your screen, you can only share your iPad screen and not the external monitor screen. So if you've got loads of stuff open up, you're going to have to move that to the iPad screen and share it that way. If you're using a Bluetooth keyboard with it, like I am, you'll get loads of missed strokes here. And I don't know if that's something to do with my keyboard or my iPad specifically, but I seem to be going back and correcting myself all the time. The iPad seems to get a lot warmer now than it ever did before as well. And that could be an M2 thing, I'm not overly sure, but that hasn't hit performance. It's just something I notice when I check the temperature of the iPad. And even though I'm using the studio display, which is a fantastic way to use this setup, you can't actually change the brightness of the studio display with any keyboard shortcuts, at least not on my keyboard. You have to go to settings and I have to change it that way, which just feels really, really weird. And because the studio display doesn't take an HDMI, I can't use my fancy dock for the iPad to connect everything up. And that dock is really useful because it's got SD card slots, USB-C inputs, USB-A inputs, and headphone jacks and a bunch of other stuff, which is really useful. So yeah, those are a bunch of annoying little things which popped up while I was using this. So the big question of course is, is the iPad really a Mac replacement and can it function as a desktop computer? And I kind of want to say no to that, but I also wanted to mention that the iPad is not really built for this. It's adapting to it. And the fact that it even got external monitor support at all is kind of awesome. You know, we all picked up an iPad based on what it could do before it could do any of this. So getting all of this in a software update is pretty awesome. Even though it doesn't work across all of the iPads, the fact that it works on any of the iPads is really cool. And I'm not trying to defend Apple here at all. They should be held to the highest kind of standards. But the fact that this was never promised and then it suddenly came out of nowhere, is a really cool feature and we've kind of got to remember that. And I really don't think Apple's trying to convince us to switch from a Mac to an iPad. The iPad is basically an adaptive computer that can do a bunch of stuff and works really well for some people. And if you prefer using a Mac and having a Mac experience like I do for pretty much everything, then switching to an iPad doesn't make sense. For me, the iPad is still this wonderful companion to a Mac and it does some things incredibly well it does other things not so well. But if you are an iPad sole user and now suddenly you have this experience and you might want to get an external monitor, then this is great. It's all additional, so why not enjoy it for what it is? And like I said, there are some times when you can completely forget that you're using an iPad and it just feels like a standard desktop experience. When you've got those full screen apps or when you're using the browser to do work, everything feels great and the experience is really fantastic. So that just about rounds up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're using your iPad with an external display, I'd love to know what you're using it for and why. So let me know in the comments below. I always love to hear what you have to say. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.